Our next speaker comes from uh, uh, Paris, France. His name is uh, uh, Dr. Georges Lacry. Uh, he's a professor at the Ecole Nationale de Communication. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that properly. I don't speak French. Um, he also works for the French National Electricity Company. And he's going to talk to us today about a pretty hard problem to deal with very long time series where you have very wide gaps and how you do interpolation. And when you do this interpolation, estimate the error. And uh, we, th this is very relevant to problems we have here at UC Berkeley in astrophysics because we have very big gaps and we have also have measurement error in our observations. So the, many of us here are interested to see um, this apply to a different problem for photo, uh, uh, photoelectric cells, for solar cells. Uh, he's going to talk to us about how to predict um, power generation given variations in uh, sun and cloud cover uh, and uh, in a sensor network so that you can sort of share power. Um, a pretty cool project. So I'll uh, give the floor to him. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Is it OK? So first, I want to thank the organizers to give, us, uh, give me the opportunity to present this work here. This is John's uh, work from uh, Telecom Paris Tech, which is uh, an engineering school in uh, France. And uh, EDF, Electricité de France, which is uh, the main uh, electric power company in France. So the motivation of this work is that, as I mentioned, uh, Joao, uh, there is a, a trend to introduce more renewable energy uh, in the power network, mainly um, uh, solar panels, PV, photovoltaic PV systems, and wind power. So this is a problem for the power network because the, general, the production of electric power is subject to uh, huge variations uh, with time. You may, you, as you can understand, uh, if there is sun, there is uh, production for, by PV system. If there are clouds, the production goes down very fast. So this is related to the smart grid problem. In the smart grid, one important thing is to introduce renewable uh, energy resources in the grid. So there is a need to be able to uh, predict what's going to be uh, the production of uh, renewables uh, in a short term, I mean a few hours, and more locally, uh, I mean in a region or in a city. So the goal is to build uh, here a method, to develop a method for very short-term predictions of individual PV system. I mean here one site uh, of a, a solar, so, solar panel. <coughs> uh, there are uh, several approaches to do so. First, m uh, the main approaches uh, do not deal with prediction for individual sites, but usually there are methods uh, dealing with a region and a longer term, for instance, uh, prediction one day ahead, more aggregated uh, and longer term. And these methods use usually external information, which is a weather forecast, for instance, if there's uh, going to be uh, clouds or not. Uh, if there are approaches which try to uh, uh, use the same approach for more local uh, prediction and uh, uh, shorter term. The problem with these approaches is that you need to acquire locally uh, weather information, weather forecast information, and up to now the weather forecast information is not very good uh, locally because it's interpolation of larger uh, uh, forecasts. Uh, another uh, approach to do a local prediction is to track by uh, satellite uh, images to track the movement of clouds and then uh, by processing these images 
try to find if a cloud is going to arrive at a certain point or not. So this is interesting, this is under development, and again, it needs a lot of computation and uh, to acquire locally uh, this information about uh, is, there, is a cloud going to arrive or not. So we do not want to uh, compete with uh, all these very good approaches, very uh, uh, complicated approaches. We try to build a more simple approach, which is not going to be the best one, and it's not going to give the best prediction. But the idea is that we consider uh, a set of local sites, each one having uh, solar, uh, solar uh, panels, and we try to predict locally what's going to happen in a very short term uh, regarding to uh, prediction. Uh, so, uh, we do not um, uh, require any external information about weather forecast. We just work on history of prediction within, all site, uh, within each site, but we allow some collaboration between the sites if they can help each other uh, for uh, improving the prediction. So the outline of uh, the talk is first I'm going to describe quickly the method, <coughs> then tell a few words how it can be deployed in a real environment, then give uh, some, uh, the results of some experiments on real data. <coughs> so the method is based on what we call a local analog search, which is a kind of k-nearest neighbor method. Uh, then we try to find uh, within each site which are the situations in the past which are most, uh, more similar to the current situation. So each site stores, keep track of the history of its local, of its own production. So we have k nearest neighbors. Then we have a second step. We define a collaboration which uh, enables uh, to select within these K, uh, uh, these, uh, K analogs, this K most similar uh, situation, to select only B situation using uh, this collaboration. And then we run the prediction. Uh, actually, it's a little more complicated because uh, it's real data. So we need to have a normalization uh, phase before applying the learning algorithm, and then before prediction, uh, we have a denormalization phase. Just a few words, uh, a few words about this uh, normalization. As you know, the, the production uh, of um, solar energy is subject to changes during the day, depending on how much sun there is, if there, there are no clouds. So we just divide the real uh, production by what we call the clear sky production, which is the production without any clouds, and which can be computed uh, uh, from uh, the history of the site. So we, we, we work on this uh, signal. Then we have this uh, uh, local analog search. So it's, we define a template. Uh, which is from the current situation, uh, which is a, a number of previous uh, uh, timestamps where we recorded uh, the, uh, the production. So we uh, store from the current situation, we have the description of the current situation with, in the terms of some previous production. And then uh, the, the problem is to try to find, uh, to predict the production in what we call the horizon. So the system is very simple. Uh, we um, look for past situations using the same template and uh, similarity measure, which is uh, uh, the Euclidean distance. Remember, we have normalized the, the curve. So we find uh, in, the, in the history several situations. Actually, uh, we, we uh, select k analog situations. We, uh, we can associate 
uh, way to each situation depending on the similarity uh, to the current situation. So what's important now is that we, we have selected some time stamps in the, in the past with some weights associated with each timestamp. So we do this within each site. Now we have this collaboration process. So the idea is that each local site does the same job, look for the analogs in the past, determine the, uh, determine the different timestamps, and the weight of each situation for each selective timestamp. Now they are going to collaborate. So the collaboration is very simple. The different sites do not send any information about the uh, production, but only the timestamps of the most similar, of the K most similar situations, and the weights of the situations associated with each timestamp. They only exchange timestamps and weights of timestamps. So this collaboration can capture uh, not everything we'll see at the end, but what we call a current global climatic situation. I mean by climatic or climatic, I don't know, situation. Uh, some situations which we observe frequently in the past. So, as an example, here we have this current global situation, and this site has found two analogs this analog and this second analog. And for, uh, for uh, this site, uh, there are two possibilities it's going to be sunny in the next hours or it's going to be cloudy in the next hours. The idea here is to define this collaboration so that the other uh, sites uh, may help to select this uh, analog instead of this analog. So how does it work uh, precisely? So we, we are currently working on this on uh, site I, and site I has found four analogs at these different timestamps. Uh, the other sites, the neighbor site, has found uh, as well analogs, but at different timestamps. So this analog, we look at uh, this timestamp, and we find that there is only on, uh, site 3, which has an analog at the same timestamp. Uh, for the the uh, second analog here, there is no analog in other sites at the same time stamp. For this one, there is one. But for this one, as you can guess, it's, this one is going to be the winner because uh, there are several timestamps, uh, uh, analog timestamps, uh, at the same time uh, within other sites. So this is how the method works. <coughs> So once we have selected, so first for each site, we have selected K analogs. From the K analogs, we have selected only B analogs, a subset of them using collaboration. Then we have uh, these B analogs, and we use the uh, horizon of the previous analogs to make a prediction. So we have B proposition for the next future, for the prediction. And we compute after the denormalization, we compute a, mean curve, a median curve uh, to do so. <coughs> so this is the, the method. Um, so it's interesting to see that it's very easy to uh, scale it to a very large number of uh, sites by using a peer-to-peer -peer approach. So each, uh, uh, each site can uh, contact uh, a server mod module and, uh, and register to this uh, mo uh, server module. And once uh, it has uh, registered, uh, it, uh, some neighbors are defined. And then the collaboration can work using this peer-to-peer -peer approach. Note that the 
consumption, uh, the, the production of each site is not shared between servers, only the timestamps. So then each site can do its own uh, prediction using this collaboration approach. Uh, another feature, if some uh, sites agree to give their production, historical, uh, historical production, it can be used by neighbor, uh, neighbor sites which are just installed. So new sites may benefit from the history of production of other sites. Now I describe uh, some experiments uh, we've done to assess the quality of the prediction. So if you remember, I said it's not going to be the best method and the best performance. Uh, so we considered data, real data from uh, two years of production of 11 uh, TV systems in the island of La Réunion, which is uh, close to Madagascar. We have uh, time series either at uh, 10 minutes or hour uh, step. But that uh, data has been normalized with respect to clear sky production, as I explained to you. We use one year for learning and the other year for um, assessing the performance. The similarity measure is the median distance, k is equal to 50, d to 25, and we have worked on horizons of prediction uh, of different lengths. Um, we have worked on, uh, of course it's important to compare this with competitive models, so we considered first uh, first model uh, we, we call the persistent uh, method. So the idea is that uh, at current time we have uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, production, then in the next 30 minutes it's going to be the same uh, production. So this is the persistence model. It's a little corrected by the clear sky model, so we use the shape uh, of the clear sky uh, uh, curve to uh, adjust the persistence model. So this is first reference model. Then we use another reference model. The idea there is to uh, be able to do collaboration. So we use a linear regression method. So for each site we have its own history of production, and we build a regression model, uh, so it's an autoregressive model, predict the next value from the W previous values. So what we did is we have regression model without collaboration, and if we consider collaboration, it means that we are going to use previous values of other sites. It means that data is centralized. You need to centralize data to build these models. And it means that the data is shared between the different uh, sites because you need to transmit this data. So some results. So first, shortest horizon, 10 minutes. So what we can see, so we have here the results for the 11 sites. For each site, here on the left part, we have the performance, so it's a mean square error, of the analog method in blue uh, without collaboration, in red with collaboration. So first thing, if you consider all the sites, we have a slight improvement using collaboration. Uh, then the second uh, so then the, the next method here is the persistence model and then we have the linear regression model uh, here it's without collaboration and here it's with collaboration so the results are regression models are better than the analog method um, for regression model and for analog method Collaboration helps a little, slightly. Then, the reference model of persistence, which is completely 
uh, tribule uh, is between them. So this is for the 10 minutes. <coughs> for 30 minutes, uh, we see the trend that the persistence model is going to be worse, degrades. Uh, but still we have the same results for uh, the linear model is better than the analog model for all sides, and collaboration helps a little. For two hours, uh, the persistence model is really bad. <coughs> uh, and here we have the, only the analog uh, model, which uh, the linear model is still uh, better, uh, but there is a slight or no improvement uh, with collaboration. So, it's good news, and bad news and good news. Uh, I think that if uh, the, the fact that collaboration does not degrade the result, first, it, it's good news. It's a slight improvement. Then, uh, we have only here 11 PV system, only 11 sites. So we are working on a larger number of sites, uh, 250 uh, sites. We just had uh, some data about this. And uh, we hope that uh, it's going to help. Collaboration is going to help more uh, when we have more sites. So as a conclusion, um, we have proposed a collaborative analog method for uh, predicting uh, PV generation locally at each site. It does not generate the best possible prediction, but it does a good job in a simple way. It uses only PV protection data, no external information on weather forecast. It keeps local, uh, locally private the, product, the production values between sites, even if there is a collaboration. The collaboration there is the exchanges, the communications between sites are very, very small, only these timestamps. And uh, another feature, it, it can be uh, applied to other sensor network problems, for instance, for temperature or for wind. And even we, we can have heterogeneous uh, sensors. Since we only exchange uh, timestamps, we can have, we can exchange timestamps of previous situations uh, about uh, temperature, on between sensors of temperature, of rain, uh, or anything. Uh, so we are working currently on testing the approach with larger neighborhoods, uh, developing the peer-to-peer -peer architecture, and we work on a very different approach uh, which tries to track the movement of the clouds, uh, considering that each PV uh, system is like a sensor which can uh, track all these, uh, uh, the, the movement of clouds. So it's a different approach because the approach I've described just um, consider global climatic situation, which uh, repeat uh, which are frequent in the past. And this new approach is dynamic and track clouds in real time. So it's a very different approach. So thank you very much. Thank you for a very interesting talk. Um, so we have time for some questions. <laughs> Also very nice idea. I think it's, it's a great idea of changing the timestamps. I was wondering, how do you select the top uh, ones in the past for each site? Do you consider just windows of 10 minutes, for example, as you were saying, or do you consider, let me pick the entire rest today in the past or the entire rest is two hours? What is the, the way of selecting those, those local best? Uh, we use, uh, so we have this template, uh, so it's like a sliding window, sliding window. Uh, then for each uh, position of this window, we have uh, some values, and we compute the, the Euclidean distance uh, from the current situation, and then we just take the k uh, most similar. It's 
Yes, it's after the four period of ten minutes. For um, or whatever period. Um, so uh, for a fixed number, the, the template, for instance, the template may be six hours. And it's a fixed period. It does not have to be the same length for the different sensors, yes. but for one sensor, it's fixed. So we have tried several uh, values. Uh, depends, so it depends if it's 10 minutes data or how many data. And uh, six hours is something uh, which was a good get the best result. Thank you. Any other questions? Do you have, do you have another question? Sure. sure. At some point, you mentioned that you were using weights to decide um, you know, those classes of values and these neighbors. How do you compute those weights? What are those? Um, so, uh, we have weights for um, uh, uh, within uh, each site, we have some weights uh, depending on the distance. So, it's normalized and it's just decreasing uh, uh, weights. But then now, from uh, between the, between the, uh, the sites, uh, we combine uh, the local weights, uh, normalizing them. But uh, we have, uh, we only take, uh, uh, we, we also have a, a coefficient, uh, which is the proportion of uh, external uh, data, external. Uh, weights we consider from uh, outside sites. And we, we can vary uh, this uh, coefficient. So if this coefficient is equal to zero, it means no collaboration. If it's equal to <coughs> one, it means that only the other sites uh, contribute to the prediction of the local site. Is it clear? So I can do Yes, a question in the back. Uh, well, I was uh, curious if there are any seasonalities in the uh, patterns of your data or not. I mean, it looks like it on uh, Yes and no. Uh, since it's uh, uh, not very far from the equator, so the, the, the days are almost of equal length. Uh, there is some uh, seasonality, uh, but the, the seasonality, um, um, uh, the, the consequence of this seasonality is that we, we need a minimum of one year for learning the, uh, for, uh, of this story, for finding the, the neighbors, uh, the, most, the, the analogs, for finding the analogs. Then there was another question. Uh, which was, uh, since uh, the, all the days are not of the same length, so how do we uh, manage with this? So we decided to select only the times where there is production uh, all the year. So it means that uh, prediction during the beginning of the day, uh, in uh, summer, for instance, and at the end of the day, 